should you pull on this banner? If you're obsessed with the actual characters under design, then go all for it. But if their appeal isn't enough for you, and if you're watching this video, you're probably wondering, are they any good? If so, then you've come to the right place for our answers. I'm Marathon, and I'll be telling you if these units are for you. To figure out if these units are good, we need to figure out what makes any unit good. There are many ways to evaluate this, but I like to take a holistic approach and see how these units would do against all the more important quests. In my humble opinion, these include four categories of quests. Free quests are the place you want to go when no event is currently running, if you're not in urgent need of a coin. These quests reward massive rank EXP, but are quite difficult, so should be considered endgame content for players aiming for higher rank or unit stat bonuses. The goal for farming these quests is primarily to collect rank XP, seeds, blossoms, or even coin, so any unit that can bring a booster for these resources would be considered better. Daily quests are better if you don't care about rank and are in need of coins or souls. This might be especially important if you're aiming to level seed a bunch of your favorites. Since these quests are farmable and are relatively easy with few mechanics, the units good for these would be those that can guarantee one turn clears. Like free quests, units are considered better if they can bring a booster for coin. Dungeon quests are playable once a day and reward a massive card EXP to your team members. You can also get tokens from here too, but you don't need to worry about these. Now, what makes a good unit for dungeons? Since these aren't farmable, resource optimization completely eclipses the need for speed. This means any unit that can bring a booster for card EXP can be considered good. Though those that can help reliably clear faster are obviously better. Anyone that can boost token drop rate is nice to have too, but always comes second to card EXP boosters. Challenge quests include high difficulty quests, clash quests, main story quests, and any other type of quest that has a one-time reward for battle completion. These are only meant to be cleared once, so features like the ability to survive and adapt over several turns become more important. This type of quest can't have its rewards boosted. A unit can be considered good if they're able to contribute to decisive team victories across the majority of, if not all, challenge quests. With these quests in mind, let's see how these units fare. Oz is heavily team dependent to work, reduces your own team's damage, and has some late battle weaknesses. So you'd think these would be deal breakers, right? Oh, oh, oh no, not the case at all. He turns any unit he moves ahead or behind of into a board wiper, and bringing some damage amp to make up for his weakened damage makes him strong enough to handle almost any kind of quest. With enough damage amp to the right damage dealer, he can help board wipe the chapter 13 free quests with ease. With damage amp and an evasion piercing damage dealer, he can reliably board wipe dailies. With a disabler, he can shut down many enemies, and with a healer, he can outheal most damage. His ability to increase the flexibility of units to be able to face any large map is unparalleled, making Oz a must-have unit. Seth is a column clear whose damage ramps up to its peak after 6 turns. He suffers a damage penalty when hit, and needs to move to either remove or to prevent this penalty. Neither his early damage nor his range is sufficient for pre-quests, but it makes do in quaint scuffles. He has some respectable defensive utility, providing mitigation to damage, debuffs, and displacement, which can come in handy in dungeons and challenge quests. His serviceable range and damage paired with his mitigating effects make him an okay 5-star unit to have. Thunderbird is a unit that deals pronounced damage to enemies in the horizontal part of his magic range. With this and his extended horizontal movement range, he is proven to work for the chapter 13 HP free quest. His respectable phase start base damage with his movement also makes him well suited for coin scuffles. He's not that great for dungeons or challenges beyond phase starts, though his ability to ferry and bunch up enemies together is appreciated. He's not terrible in any type of quests, but not exceptional in most either, making him only okay to have. Tetswax is a unit with massive damage potential and respectable range at magic. Provided he moves and gets some buffs from allies. With his costly move, his damage just isn't enough to make up for his lack of other utility for free quest farming. His move dependent serviceable range and big damage is misplaced in coin scuffles too, when he lacks other utility to justify the move cost. He does get his chance to shine in dungeons and challenge quests, boasting boss killing damage with his charge attack and cheesy survival with guts. Due to his massive and somewhat accessible damage potential, he'll always be nice to have when you're looking for high damage. 
Help is a local team damage amplifier and column clearer. The catch is the reliability of his damage amp is dependent on how many turns he can go without getting hit. His reliability issues make him a liability for both free quest and daily quest farming. Although the amp itself is very high when it does go off, all without needing to move. His column clearing damage also ramps up by the same condition. So his damage isn't reliably self-sufficient for the early turns of even coin scuffles. The reward for keeping him unhit is quite high, though the effort you have to go to ensure he doesn't get hit can be a challenge in itself due to his natural aggro. If you can play around both his mechanics and the quest mechanics, you can find both his offensive and defensive support to be impressive for dungeons and challenge quests. All in all, he's an okay 5 star unit to have. So, should he pull on this banner? Well, if you don't have Oz, you definitely 100% should, no questions. But if you do already have him, you might want to consider if you already have better options for these quests before pulling. I hope these recommendations helped you on your gacha journey. If you found this helpful, please consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing. I also just set up a Patreon, and I'm also accepting tips. You can find the link to these in the description. Take care everyone!